It's a great pleasure to be again with you because uh, you are my friends and uh, I feel very comfortable to be here. It's like my second country and actually uh, Greece and uh, Lebanon have a very strong um, uh, collaboration in uh, many aspects and uh, I feel uh, like being uh, in a greater family here. Uh, special thanks uh, to our uh, uh, Dean, uh, Professor and uh, uh, President-elect uh, uh, of the Arab Association of Urology and of course uh, to the CEO of uh, the hospital here and uh, to uh, Yasser, a very good friend of mine. So I'll try to go through the aspect of uh, uh, rears. Uh, stone uh, uh, disease is a very uh, frequent disease. We actually see many patients uh, with uh, uh, stones and uh, with the technology now we do more and more things in a less invasive way. And uh, as uh, the title of uh, the meeting today is minimal invasive, uh, stone uh, uh, disease is uh, uh, a disease that you can treat with minimal invasive ways. I've uh, written the last 10 uh, uh, years many uh, articles, uh, are they original or reviews regarding uh, rears because it's one of my subspecialities. And uh, with the suit uh, we went through reviewing the literature and we see that we have more publications regarding uh, uh, rears in comparison with ESWL or with uh, uh, PERC. Laser is uh, the great uh, uh, a lithotripsy modality that uh, has been uh, uh, updated and uh, has uh, improved. And we have novel technologies also that can diagnose uh, even upper tract TC uh, in uh, the kidney. The good thing is that now we have the fifth generation of the flexible scopes with the digital flexi uh, technology. And that means that more urologists can perform uh, more such uh, operations. So uh, RIRS is uh, an operation that now can be performed by uh, most of the urologists and uh, it's very important because technology moves everything forward and we have to uh, go with it. You can see comparison of the first generation and uh, the fourth generation where actually when you put uh, the several accessories inside the working channel you have a, a very good deflection now with the last generation of uh, the disposable scopes. That was not the case with the first generation. So what uh, is important is uh, that uh, with the digital flexi technology, uh, it's easier to handle your scope. You can operate for uh, a longer period of time and you can see better, you can zoom better, and that means that uh, it's safer for the patient and you are more efficient and more quick to uh, deal with a huge uh, stone uh, burden. Uh, as I mentioned before, with new technologies like NBI, you can diagnose uh, upper tract uh, TCC. Uh, for example, uh, with the white light technology, you cannot identify a small tumor uh, inside the PC system, but with the MBI technology you can. So RIRS uh, is uh, for many diagnostic and therapeutic uh, uh, options. Regarding uh, stone disease is the most uh, uh, frequent used indication. The only uh, disadvantage of the disposable scopes uh, is the cost, but not in all cases, because there are studies that have uh, uh, compared uh, centers that uh, actually deal with a huge number of stone patients and with a less. And if uh, in general you are performing uh, less than 100 uh, flexible uteroscopies per year, it's better to have disposable scopes than uh, if you have more than 100. But this changes because now the disposable scopes are not, re are not used as single use and that's why I use the term disposable scopes, not single use, because you can use them for more than one time and there are scopes that you can use them for uh, many, many hours. The initial scopes, uh, the, the, the disposable ones, uh, had a time frame of uh, time limit of four hours. This moved to seven hours, but we have scopes that don't have a time limit. 
Uh, that's why the guidelines have uh, uh, included the uh, disposable scopes uh, uh, as an improvement uh, and something that we can use. These were the initial scopes, uh, the Litho View from Boston Scientific. Now we have the Litho View Elite that uh, uh, gives you the advantage of uh, measuring uh, the pressure. Uh, and uh, other companies like Pushin have brought uh, some other scopes, but now we have more and more uh, uh, um, uh, companies like OTU that uh, gives you uh, advantages. Uh, that has to do with uh, the time uh, usage. And uh, most, uh, uh, mostly I, I like uh, uh, innovation and the huge med has uh, introduced a slimmer scope, the 7.5, that also combines some advantages of the OTU, like the fact that there is no time limit. And um, also there is for right, left, and uh, if you have a slimmer uh, scope, that means that you don't need to use an access sheath. Uh, you can go in without pristenting. So there are several issues that uh, uh, we need to follow, and that's why competition actually uh, move us to slimmer scopes that, uh, of course, are uh, easy to use. Uh, and you can see excellent uh, uh, bending uh, and deflection uh, maneuvers uh, with these new disposable scopes. So, for sure, uh, we'll have uh, new scopes that we're going to use and more and more uh, colleagues will gonna perform uh, rears because uh, you can see that these scopes uh, are very uh, user-friendly and they are very efficient. And actually last year we had a nice workshop here. Um, it's important also to have uh, uh, different uh, uh, scopes for uh, each of the kidney because of the working uh, channel. It could be three or nine o'clock as you can see. So it's good to have these options with experience, you can manage, but it's good to have uh, uh, these uh, uh, on site to use wherever you want. I won't go through details that you already know for the sake of time, but be always cautious with lower pole uh, stones because sometimes the angle is very uh, steep and uh, it's uh, not so easy to get in uh, with uh, your uh, uh, scope. And uh, in uh, such cases, you may consider mini PCNL, but uh, with uh, even uh, uh, a generation, um, fourth generation of a scope, you could easily go through this uh, angle. And uh, it's very important not to use in these cases with a very steep angle, uh, a reusable scope, uh, because this will damage it. There are several tips and tricks uh, that you can use, for example, to reallocate uh, the stone but always be careful because when you grab uh, uh, big stones inside the kidney uh, you may have the stone trapped uh, inside uh, the basket so that's why i usually prefer a grasper than a basket i'll show these details further uh, in my presentation uh, always uh, bear in mind where exactly you are focusing and uh, you have to accommodate uh, your wrist movements uh, with the kidney that uh, you are using uh, and you are uh, operating. So you can see the right kidney and the left kidney, the differences. Um, nearly 10 years ago, we actually were the first in London to use the uh, digital flexible scopes. But we found uh, that uh, because of the chip on the tick technology, we had a bigger diameter and we had to use more accesses. But now with the new generations, this doesn't, uh, um, um, there's no need for the usage of the accesses. Um, there are several uh, tricks uh, to see better. And this is the Traxair uh, uh, device, uh, the pump manually very very cautiously you can see better it's better than to put forced uh, um, uh, irrigation and especially for assistant to irrigate because you may have uh, uh, urosepsis and the patient may die if you are just uh, uh, using huge pressures 
Lasers, we have new machines that uh, actually can uh, uh, deliver efficient uh, lithotripsy. But it's good to know before the composition of the stone in order to adjust the settings. Because sometimes we are not aware of the settings and uh, the capabilities of the laser machine. We need to learn about these uh, parameters instead of saying to the nurse or to the assistant, uh, fix the laser settings. We need to know the settings ourselves. Uh, this was more than 10 years ago where the thulium laser was uh, actually something new. Now it's not something new. Be aware not to laser your safety wires or other accessories and uh, decide on the technique that you're going to laser. You don't get in and you just do the same thing in all stones. You have to take into account the stone burden, the volume of the stone, the composition. And I always advise to start with fragmentation and then you continue with painting of the big fragments. This will uh, gain some time because you have a time limit of uh, one hour, one hour and a half. And usually we are lasing in bigger stones, but at the end we don't need big fragments that uh, uh, you may need the second session of uh, uh, flexi uh, ureteroscopy or ESWL. So decide on the technique and this has to do with the settings and this has to do also with the composition and the volume of the stone. So usually for painting you remember that we have high frequency, low energy, long pulse. But now with the new laser machines you may have some different options uh, regarding lasering and painting and soft or hard stones, system stones, etc. With the CT before the operation, you can predict the composition of the stone. That was as I was saying to you regarding the grasper. The grasper is safer to uh, remove big fragments because if you have this parachute, for example, uh, um, basket, the big stone can be trapped inside and inside the kidney this could be a bit dangerous. And this is a nice also grasper. Um, there is a great uh, um, uh, fast regarding uh, increased pressures. This uh, is something that uh, we should be cautious uh, if we have an active UTI because this may end up uh, to urosepsis. Um, we have uh, publications uh, increase in the last years regarding uh, the increased internal pressure. And there is some now interest regarding temperature. Um, this is a porking model where you can see actually the burning of the uh, PC system. Um, regarding complications, I won't go through all these uh, details. Uh, what I want you to note is that we need to identify the risk before the operation when we plan the surgery, during the operation, because there are several risks that has to do with the operation, with the patient, individualized risk, and of course with your equipment. And always you have to think about the worst case scenario. What will I do if this happens? And for young uh, uh, colleagues, uh, uh, it's good to be able to use simulators uh, like the one that we had, uh, uh, the Europerk mentor in London. It's good for both rears and uh, PCNL. Uh, so should I proceed? Yes, you? please. Yes. Okay. Let's, let's because leave I leave the question that till the end. I have to uh, cover also the next uh, topic. Uh, endourology, we need to do everything. And uh, we usually consent patients for both operations because we may start with our rears but uh, we may end up uh, turning the patient to do a prone PCNL or do with a combined uh, uh, position um, uh, both operations like uh, uh, my friend uh, Yasser will uh, uh, follow with his lecture. Um, it's good to have a consensus regarding uh, PCNL. It's a very nice operation, straightforward operation, but we need to exactly know before the operation how we're going to have the best results. This is uh, the publication from the consensus of uh, the EAU and the International Alliance of Urolithiasis, published uh, last year. And again, there is an issue regarding, as I said, the intraoral pressure. Uh, the most difficult part is exactly to puncture where you want to go and not just to get in. 
because uh, your wire can get in, but if you dilate in the wrong position, you may end up uh, with uh, bleeding, you may end up with a blur vision, and uh, at the end you may end up in not getting out the stone burden that you want to get out. A nice, uh, uh, easy uh, guidance that you can uh, follow with your fluoroscopy machine is the biplanar uh, puncture technique. It was published uh, three years ago. Uh, it's from Latin America, where you actually uh, have uh, the classical um, uh, fluoroscopy image, and then you turn 90 degrees, and uh, when the two lines are crossed, uh, you will do your uh, puncture. If you read this uh, article, it will be easy for you uh, to uh, standardize your puncture. Otherwise, you follow the several uh, bullseye technique, triangulation technique uh, to get in. But this is a very nice uh, uh, proposal for um, young colleagues to uh, learn to puncture exactly where they should uh, uh, go. I'll start with some complications because that's the most important thing to discuss about our complications. And this was a series uh, of a 10 year experience that we had in London with column perforation. Remember, column perforation usually happens at the left, thin patients, and uh, it's something that uh, we need to diagnose early, and it will be treated mostly conservatively by separating the systems, putting a JJ stent and uh, retracting slowly your nephrostomy tube. Now, regarding new things with PCNL, we have some publications regarding antibiotic prophylaxis. Uh, the problem is if you have an uh, infectious stone where you won't have a sterile urine culture, usually my proposal is to admit patients uh, a few days, monitor the leukocytes in the urine, and if you have uh, a very small amount of uh, leukocytes, you can carry on with the operation. Uh, with the risk, of course, of uh, uh, bacteremia, but if you have uh, 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 a plan working with uh, uh, limited uh, pressures, then uh, you won't have uh, uh, the complication of urosepsis. Another uh, big problem is when you have patients uh, that are on antiplatelets, uh, how are you going to stop uh, all these uh, anticoagulants and how are you going to bridge uh, these patients uh, with uh, heparin and uh, Thrombophylaxis and bleeding diathesis is a huge, problems, uh, huge problem in stone disease. And we had this article uh, uh, nearly eight, uh, nine years ago. Now, 2023 publications regarding PCNL. There is a trend uh, to do this operation uh, as a day surgery, and this has mostly to do with uh, mini PCNL. So, mini PCNL is a competitor of REARS and not of standard PCNL for a Staghorn stone. A very nice uh, meta-analysis that was published uh, uh, recently was regarding uh, the SIR sepsis uh, uh, complication. And um, as you will see with uh, the forest plot analysis, we have uh, uh, some uh, uh, risk factors, operating time, uh, positive preoperative uriculture, pyuria, uh, multi-track PCNL, that means more than one tract, and uh, diabetes mellitus. I won't go through details for the sake of time. Regarding uh, new trends, uh, new things that come through a uh, young uh, academic urologist in EU is uh, uh, artificial intelligence, prediction of uh, uh, the composition of the stone prior to the operation, simulator, 3D models, all these things will uh, be presented also in EU in a couple of uh, uh, weeks. Um, it's very important uh, to standardize your technique. So for the classical prone standard PCNL, we actually proposed uh, uh, a very uh, precise uh, uh, positioning of the patient so that uh, everything is comfortable uh, for both uh, the patient and the anesthetist. Uh, lateral PCNL, it's uh, an option for difficult cases like um, spina bifida patients uh, where you cannot turn them on the prone or the uh, supine position. Uh, it's good uh, to uh, actually study your CT 
prior to the operation on the position that you have decided to perform the operation. And you can see the operating window for prone, supine, and flank PCNL. The position that uh, uh, we are mostly using is the uh, parts flank free position where you can go from below and from above and you have a good uh, uh, actual access. Uh, endoyology means that you need accessories, uh, so uh, regardless of what you've decided to dilate with, the balloon is a nice uh, option, but always be aware that the balloon has this one centimeter where you may be outside the kidney. Um, so all these uh, uh, accessories are important. Even if you have the balloon with a quick uh, uh, modality of dilatation, you may uh, be stuck with uh, some things uh, that uh, you are not very experienced. So you need to expand all the balloon and not have this uh, ap uh, aponeurosis ring. Uh, as I said, mini PCNL is an option. You can do multi-track mini PCNL instead of the standard. Several tricks that you can wash out uh, uh, fragments uh, and it, it will speed up things. The um, sock pulse Olympus uh, uh, lithotripsy machine uh, is quite efficient with the ultrasound modality. It's good to have baskets to get up fragments quickly. Um, and if you are using the laser in the mini PCNL, it's good to stabilize your laser. So there are several accessories that you can use. If you decide to go with multi-tract, it's good to put all your wires before dilating because imagine if you put your wire uh, and then you dilate and then you want to put another wire, these are not feasible. So if you are planning everything, you should do it before the patient is on the operating table. Plan it in your mind. Um, it's good to have your intervention audiologist uh, uh, if you have complications. These are quite rare. So the key to success is uh, what we are doing today, everyone being together, networking, exchanging ideas, knowledge, and uh, uh, this is very important. So thank you very much for your kind attention.